Hey guys, it's Dave from Voidsmith Innovation. We got a really exciting video for you today. Um, you know, it's kind of funny, we're in August, but uh, we're already thinking about doing some liquid de-icing. And the topic that we want to talk about today is our old boom style versus the new 2018 boom that we designed here. And we've got a lot of nice features on this addressing some issues that we saw with the old boom. And we're gonna compare them right now and talk about them. As a lot of you guys know and see in all of our past videos, this is the old style boom that we used to have. We used to run the triples on them. Um, basically, you had your post-treatment jet tips and your pre-treatment fan tips on the boom. And then you had, if you upgraded to the three-lane boom model, you had your two side booms that uh, covered about 10 feet out each side of the vehicle. All in all, it worked really well for us. Good boom design, um, but we did find some severe weaknesses in it, the, especially when we were all plowing with them. And we know that anytime there's a weakness and we have downtime, that's something that we want to avoid for sure. It costs us more money. So what we did is we completely went away from the triple design. Um, they had a very strong tendency to actually break off when backing through large windrows and um, a lot of ice build up on them, things like that, hard to turn. The pressure caps, we always backed them down to two PSI to get a little bit better slower speed performance, but what happened is sometimes the salt brine itself would actually evaporate out, leave the salt behind in the pressure caps, and next thing you know, we'd be out in the field, um, negative five degrees, taking the pressure caps off, trying to flush them out. So the new boom design that you see here, we're 100% open flow on it. So we have the same size orifice in the same stainless tube inside of the boom itself, but there is no turning the tips, there's no um, problems with evaporation that we might see before. Um, you'll notice that this boom is 100% protected. So the stainless pipe itself is now structural before the old T on those used to be the weak point that we designed them. So basically you'd break the T um, in the middle and replace a $3 part instead of your stainless pipe sections. Well now with that stainless pipe being structural on these booms, you should be able to bend the boom back um, and still be able to spray and finish the job. You'll notice that we don't, without the triples, we still want to be able to pre-treat. So the way we address that situation is we have brought, gone to a broadcast pre-treatment setup. So this one single jet um, tip here is going to actually cover the width of the truck for you. And instead of changing the triples back and forth and having to switch 11 triples at once, now we simply just change our hose location, change our application rate in the controller, and we just went from pre to post treat or vice versa. Same concept on the side booms. The one really weak point with this boom was that we were set up for 100% post treat with it. And what happens is when we run a dynamic system like we have, basically our flow rate's constantly changing, these tips want to pattern at a certain flow rate. And where we saw huge weaknesses in these at low application rates and low speeds, we would only be patterning about four feet out the side of the truck, if that. Then with the pressurized center boom, the liquid would take the path of least resistance and generally shut off the center boom, which I'm sure that some of you guys have experienced. The way we got around that now is we run a post-treatment fan tip for the side and a pre-treatment. And they are going to be tuned into those speed ranges that you're going to be hitting um, pre-treating or post-treating, but they're also set up to pattern at the flow rates that we're gonna be seeing with the um, either pre-treat or post-treatment. Same exact concept, all we do is switch the hose location between pre and post-treatment. And this has given us tremendously better low speed performance, especially at low, uh, low speed application rates. Where our systems would struggle to run pre-treating at 50 gallons per acre, we're now doing very well at 30. Um, 30 gallons per acre, which is a huge, huge increase for us um, as far as efficiency and performance goes. So the one thing that we're really, as you can tell, um, concerned with is durability. Anytime we break the boom in an event, um, that's downtime. If we can't finish the job, now we have even more logistic issues. So we're gonna do something pretty cool here and we're gonna see which boom holds up to more abuse. Um, and I think we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it and then we're gonna, we're gonna see which one the winner is at the end of the day and, and how long these booms will actually keep spraying through a, a variety of different situations. So stay tuned. All right guys, test number one, loading the boom into your truck. Now I want you to ignore the fact that I'm wearing a t-shirt right now and that it's beautiful outside. Put yourself in your shoes about four months from right now. It's 5 a.m. You're scrambling to get your accounts de-iced. And I'm wondering, have you ever had this happen to you?
What are you doing, Derek? We gotta be out. I broke my boom, Dave. Are you serious? I told you to get the upgraded boom from VSI. I didn't know where to grab it. What'd you break on it? I broke one of the triples off. Uh, well, thankfully they were smart enough to design them to still work. I'm gonna go get the other truck going. You hurry up and try to fix that. We'll see you out there. See you in three hours. That's gonna cause downtime. Scenario number two. You need to grab the shovel out of your truck because you have to shovel the sidewalks that the sidewalk crew didn't take care of. Scenario number three, the unexpected. Here at VSI, we always try to figure out which situations are very common and which are not. We usually build around both of them. Like that very overweight employee you have that always is wanting to take selfies on the back of the boom after a great night of plowing. Oh man, what a, what a great night of plowing. I wanna take a selfie to remember this moment. Come on guys. Oh yeah. Smile. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> well, turns out that wasn't a very good test because apparently that one's built pretty well too. But for the fun of it, let's all get on this one too. Come on guys. Oh yeah, strong. Oh yeah. Oh, this one works pretty well too. Scenario number five. Are you tired of paying out workman's comp claims from your employees saying they're hurt? Ah! Wow, that was simple. Scenario number four. Do you have vandals in your neighborhood that come and break the tips off of your boom the night before a big storm? Hey, get out of here, kid! What are you doing? On to scenario number six. We all know that with plowing, backing up is the essential part or an essential move in the process. Well, even with all of today's modern technology of backup cameras, drivers seem to be getting a lot worse. We're gonna use this here concrete cattle tank to uh, simulate maybe a obstacle in the parking lot, a back of a loading dock, something like that. And uh, we're gonna see how well the booms hold up to some rear impact. Accidentally backing into things means you'll never get the job done. It'll leave you with a bunch of parts to replace and it'll never be the same. Nah! Well, She's still holding up pretty good, and you know this is our R&D run. In all honesty, on some of this stuff, we haven't even tried to break it yet. Um, it's just a slight bend in it. We're gonna see uh, see how much more it can take. Scenario number seven. Are you sick and tired of your special employees mistaking your booms as summer uh, drags for your parking lots?
Oh, they're gonna fire me. Oh, I'm fired. Oh. Oh, these look important. Oh. How about we see how the new boom holds up? strap gave up before the boom did. All right, well, like every good test, we need to see the performance of uh, the test units at the end of the, the trials. Obviously, we put these booms through, uh, through some pretty serious workouts, but you know, even one of those hits or something like that would, would yield some of this damage on the boom. Um, we have seen booms in the cold look just like this when they come back, maybe not with all the scratches on them, but definitely missing tips. Um, very common for these booms to bend right here at this weak point where we came up through. And, you know, all it takes is one part of that boom to fail and uh, we get results like what we see here. So just for fun, we are going to, to run water through them now and see where exactly they are broken. See how well the new boom held up against it. So we'll, uh, we'll run the middle boom on here. I don't think it really matters where the, uh, the triples are turned at the moment. Probably not. You know, not too bad. Extreme over-application over, over here. We're getting some heavy application on the left side of the boom, it looks like. Uh, right side of the boom suffering a little bit because of that. I don't know if we could uh, you know, even call this usable. Why don't we check out uh, side booms real quick, huh? While he's switching it, these are all the parts that broke off it, so you would have to replace all these parts. In all honesty, you'd have to... Even one, of these, even one of these triples, I mean, you know, the cost of them being over $30 a piece, uh, you can see where just the expense of, of one, one of those components breaking comes in, let alone the 11 that are on the boom itself. That doesn't even count the time where you have to, you have to strip down these old booms, pull U-bolts off of them, um, reassemble them. I mean, honestly, it, they're, they were complete pain for us. They got the job done, but not, uh, not what we were looking for. So this side boom looks like it's okay. Obviously functions a little bit bent, which is what you can expect from getting thrown off the roof. I don't even think we need to do this one. Um, this one did break off the mount itself, bent. I mean, it's uh, all in all, we can say this boom is completely destroyed. And uh, let's see how the other one did, huh? All right, so we're actually gonna run this one. Derek made a good point. Uh, you know, these, if these do break off, um, <laughs> you're, you're pretty much done for running your three lane boom for the night. Um, and you know, relatively susceptible part when it's sticking out just outside the back of the truck. Even if you watch some of the videos where I'm backing down loading docks, you know, there was one time I was about an inch off the wall. Um, in the cold like that, it would not take, it would not have taken much to break those off. So. Um, pretty good run through of this boom. She's toast. Let's, uh, let's bring the new boom in and see what we got. Running just like it did before. Looks like that one got a little bent. 
I can't uh, really picture a scenario that's equal to getting thrown off a roof when you're snow plowing, but. Probably not. <laughs> you know, the first side to hit the ground, we did tweak this frame a little bit. It is to be expected, but the cool thing, um, we are still up in business. And actually this guard nose isn't even putting out quite as much as we would with our, our spray systems. Probably only getting 12 gallons per minute. We can feed it about 30 um, when it's on the sprayer itself. And this one, you know, obviously it broke off when we hit the ground. Not too good out of that tip, but that's to be expected. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I mean, we, I know we had, a, we had a tremendous amount of fun doing it. It's not every day we get to go out and break the brand new things that, uh, that we make here. Um, one thing we kind of just want to stress is that we, we, you know, we actually go out of our way to make sure that we're continually improving our designs and everything. Um, Derek and I spent a tremendous amount of time thinking of ways to eliminate problems like we saw with this boom, even though up against competitor models and everything else, it might have been performing fine. Anything that creates any bit of downtime for us is not acceptable. And just the fact that this boom um, can still function through what we did with it is, is hands down a, a complete success in our minds. We didn't know where it'd fail. We didn't know if it'd fail. We didn't think it would. Um, and it, it shows that, uh, that the hard work actually pays off and, and it's gonna help you guys out in the field for sure. So thanks again for watching. Um, stay tuned for quite a few more good videos coming up.